In this lesson, we're going to take a close look at the autopilot. The AP system can be used in a number of ways. There are, for example, two autopilots, AP1 and AP2, and there are two AP control modes available. These are control wheel steering and command. The system only allows for the engagement of one autopilot at a time. The only exception to this is during approach and go around when both APs can be engaged. You should use the AP system whenever possible as it considerably reduces your workload while at the same time maximizing safety, efficiency and comfort. The two autopilots are totally independent of each other. If one AP fails, the second AP can take over. This lesson will explain the function of the autopilot with modification numbers 11454 and 11900. Additional explanation is given where necessary when the AP uses a previous standard. Please refer to the relevant FCOM to identify your aircraft configuration. Most of the AP components are located on the FCU. Others are located on the throttles and the control wheels. Select each of the components to review its function. You must select each of the components. The GO levers, located on the throttle levers, enable you to select the APFD takeoff and go around modes. You've already seen the APFD mode selector push buttons. When used to select a mode, the push button illuminates, as you see here. Any flight director mode can be engaged as the FD works independently of the autopilot. AP engagement status is an select there is one engagement lever for each AP. When set to on, the respective AP is engaged. The AP disconnect push button on each control wheel allows for the immediate disengagement of the APs. This push button allows you to select the AP modes control wheel steering or command. The push button illuminates to indicate which mode is engaged, which here is control wheel steering. AP engagement status is enunciated in column 5, line 2 of the FMA. The enunciation is amber for control wheel steering and white for command. Here you can see that AP1 is engaged in control wheel steering. Finally, these are the Autoland warning lights. They will be covered in detail in the AFS warnings lessons. Now let's go on to look at AP modes. Control wheel steering maintains the aircraft's pitch attitude and bank angle at the time it is engaged. Remember, at any one time, only one AP can be engaged in control wheel steering. If you need to change the pitch attitude and bank angle, as ordered by the FD command bars, you simply apply a load above a preset threshold on the control wheel. Once your required pitch attitude or bank angle is reached, all you need to do is release the control wheel, and control wheel steering maintains the aircraft's new attitude until you apply a new load. As you already know, with the AP in control wheel steering, electric pitch trim is available via the rocking levers throughout the flight. Remember, you're flying the aircraft through the AP. This means that all the functions available in manual flight are available during automated flight with control wheel steering. There are some limits to the automation of flight with control wheel steering engaged. For example, control wheel steering cannot control movement of the aircraft around its yaw axis. This has to be done manually. In addition, automatic pitch trim is inhibited in flight if a load is detected on a control column when the landing gear is extended. And in go-around for five seconds, 
to avoid an excessive attitude if you pitch the nose up. Now let's go on to look at AP in command. In command, the AP controls aircraft pitch and roll movements in flight, plus the yaw movements when slats are extended. In command, the autopilot flies the aircraft, adjusting pitch and roll as needed to fly the desired flight plan. Only one AP is engaged at any one time in command, except during approach and go around, when both APs can be engaged in command. With the autopilot engaged in command mode, the control wheel steering mode is available through a supervisory control wheel operation function to enable the pilot to manually assist the autopilot in capturing an ILS beam or in capturing and tracking a VOR radial. In lock track phase, the supervisory control wheel operation should not be used as it may disturb the lateral guidance. With modification 11900, the supervisory control wheel operation is inhibited in lock track mode. The AP is designed with an override capability in roll and yaw as a safety device. This capability allows the pilot to regain manual control in the event of an AP malfunction or hardover. The AP override is reached by applying a load above a threshold on the controls. The AP remains engaged when it is overridden. When the AP is overridden on a given axis, it remains active on the other axis. When the load is released, the AP resumes the aircraft control on this axis. Any AP override action must be accompanied by the immediate disengagement of the AP using the AP instinctive disconnect push button, as there is no automatic disengagement. It is not possible to override the autopilot in pitch. The design of the aircraft is such that as soon as a given load is applied in pitch on the control column, whatever the mode engaged and the altitude, the autopilot will automatically disengage. With modifications 11454 and 11900, the autopilot automatically disengages if a force greater than a threshold is applied depending on the mode engaged on the FMA and the altitude. Use your FCOM to identify your aircraft configuration. Then select the relevant box. That completes the topic. You use these levers to engage the APs. Only one lever is set to on because normally the system only allows one AP to be engaged and it never allows two APs to be engaged in control wheel steering. Engage AP1 now. On ground, when an AP is engaged, it automatically engages in control wheel steering. Engaging an AP has no effect on any FD modes already engaged. There are two ways to engage command. However, command can only be engaged in flight and cannot be engaged until at least four seconds after liftoff. You've been airborne for more than four seconds. Select the control that you think engages command. If an AP is already engaged in control wheel steering, pressing the control wheel steering command push button engages the AP in command. Engage an AP in command now. Where no autopilot is already engaged in flight, selecting an AP lever to on automatically engages the corresponding AP in command. Command engages in the modes which are active on the corresponding FD at the time of engagement. 
If the FD was not switched on at the time of autopilot engagement, command engages in the basic modes, vertical speed and heading. As you know, the only time that both APs can be engaged at the same time is if the APFD land or go around modes are engaged. In this case, the second AP is not active but is in standby. It disconnects as soon as another mode is selected. The FMA enunciation is dual. If land or go around mode is not engaged, then engaging the second AP automatically disengages the first one. The AP can either be disengaged intentionally or automatically. The standard procedure to disengage the AP is by pressing the AP instinctive disconnect push button on either control wheel. If both APs are engaged, they will disengage simultaneously. It is also possible to disengage the AP by setting the corresponding AP lever to the off position. In addition, the AP will automatically disengage if the motion of the pitch trim wheel is manually stopped by a pilot action or when a load above a threshold is applied on the control column. Caution, this is not the normal way to disengage the AP. Use the AP instinctive disconnect push button. Disengagement will occur in all flight phases but loads will be higher if either of these modes are enunciated in the FMA. Land or go around below 400 feet RA. Use your FCOM to identify your aircraft configuration. Then select the relevant box. That completes this lesson on the AP. Remember, you should use the AP system as much as possible as it considerably reduces your workload.